Orkney Brewery, Clutey Dumpling. Welcome to another edition of Band Bikes and Booze Reviews. It is nearly the 1st of December. Is it, I think it's the 29th of November. I don't know, I don't even know what the fucking date is. I think it's the 29th. Is it 29th or is it the 30th? I don't know, it's near that date anyway. And what I'm gonna be doing from December is I've got loads of winter beers in the fridge and I shall be reviewing them or at least one of them daily all through the month of December. And to start it off, I know I'm starting a bit early, but it's freezing cold out there. I've been working on a car for the missus all day, and I've got some of this stuff. This is from the Orkney Brewery. Now, I really like what they do. I've reviewed a few of their beers on the channel. They do some fantastic beers, two that really stick in my mind that were excellent. Dark Island, for me, is one of their best. That is absolutely superb stuff. I've tried it in the bottle. It is amazing in the bottle, but it's even better on draft or on cask, I should say. I tried that in a pub in Liverpool Street about a year ago. Was it a year ago or was it this year? Can't remember. This lockdown. It's, no, it was last year. It was last year. It was absolutely gorgeous stuff. Really, really nice. And I also like the Red McGregor that they do. Like, that's like a red ale, as the name suggests, really good. And the Skull Splitter as well. If you like Belgian doubles, if you like that really strong old ale type flavor, you will love Skull Splitter because that is an outstanding beer as well. I really like that. And I've got some of this stuff. This is their Christmas beer. This is called Clutey Dumpling. Now I know the name is absolute fucking bollocks, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it apparently it's a traditional Scottish pudding and the, I think the clutey is uh, what it's wrapped in. It's like a cloth that it's wrapped in, but it's full of fruit and spices. And apparently that's the reason it's given its name to this beer because it's full of fruit and spices. But I'm pretty confident that this is gonna be a really good beer. I saw it advertised, I think this came from, was it Beers of Europe? It might, it might have been Beers of Europe, it might have been another bottle shop, but when I saw Orkney Brewery doing a Christmas beer, I just thought I have to have some of that. And it is quite interesting. Now the Orkney Brewery have been going since 1988. Relatively new, but they're not, if you know what I mean. They do some, as I said, they do some absolutely fantastic traditional beers. And they're based, as the name suggests, they're based up in the Orkney Islands in a place called Scarabray, I think it is. And that's quite significant because it's an old, right on a, a Neolithic site. But it's also got a, quite a lot of Viking history and heritage in the Orkney, Orkney Islands. And that shows in their beer. A lot of their beer has got Viking symbols or references to North, Norse history from that region. Skull Splitter, of course, is named after, uh, I think it was a, a Viking chief who actually lived on the Auckland Islands and that was his nickname. They used to give Vikings nicknames like they do with, you know, the Native American Indians and Skull Splitter was one. I wonder how he got that name. Either he used to get a lot of hangovers or he was very, very violent. Mm, I'm thinking it might be the latter. It could even be both, who knows? Anyway, let's talk, stop talking bollocks. And let's get this beer investigated. Right, this is Clutey Dumpling. It's from the Orkney Brewery and it is 4.3%. It is in a 500ml bottle. The IBUs on this are 23, 24, sorry. And that's a really good sign because you don't really want bitter Christmas beers unless you're Scrooge or the Grinch, which I actually am. To be honest, I fucking hate Christmas. I just don't get it, never have done. Just 
as far as I'm concerned, you, I, they can fucking just miss a day. I know that's probably not going to be very popular with anyone, but I'm a miserable fucker. I'm allowed to. You'll get like this when you're my age. Trust me. Anyway, uh, what does it say? The name Clutty Dumpling comes from the, yeah, this is what I was just talking about. The name Clutty Dumpling comes from the traditional Scottish spiced pudding and the cloth or clute that it was wrapped in. This fruity spice winter ale exhibits all the warming characteristics of the of that famous dish. Now, they have got some interesting hops in this. If you're interested, they've got Bramling Gold, they've got First Gold, and they've got Fuggles. Now, Bramling Gold is renowned as a really good hop to put into Christmas beers and then winter ales, if you like. Very earthy and quite spicy as well. You got Fuggles in there, which of course, you know, they're the go-to hops for a lot of British ales. They are grown over here and they have very fruity and earthy characteristics. And they've also got First Gold as well, which is quite similar to the, the Bramling Gold, earthy, spicy, and a little bit of fruit on there as well. So it does make an interesting combination. The malts are even more interesting. They've got Pale Crystal. So that's the base malt that's been crystallized. So I'm assuming that's the reason it's quite sweet or the IBUs are quite low on that. And believe it or not, if that was below 21, I mean, these are 24. If it was below 21, I don't think you could sell that in Germany. You can, certainly couldn't sell it as a, as a Pilsner, but you know, that's by the by. And uh, it's got wheat in there as well. So it's gonna be quite full bodied. It's got malted wheat, I should say. So it's gonna be quite full bodied too. So on paper, that looks really good. Coming from a brewery like that, it should be really good. So let's see if it is really good. Right, let's get it open. My left arm is absolutely killing me. I was tightening stuff today. Oops, that is gonna go. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Um, let me get a bit in the glass first because this is just foaming up. I've taken it out of the fridge. I've let it warm up slightly. Now, I don't think this is bottle conditioned. So, what you see is what you get. Um, speaking of which, there is the cap. I do like the Orkney Brewery cra cap. Craps? <laughs> Craps? It's, it looks like a, a Triskill, which is a Viking symbol. That's what it looks like to me anyway. I'm not sure whether it is or not, but it certainly does look like one. One for the collection. Right, let's get a little bit more in the glass and see what it's like. Oh wow, that does smell spicy. It really does smell like Christmas cake, believe it or not. I'm getting ginger, sultanas, raisins, dates, and a little bit of chocolate malt that's coming through here as well. Oh, this smells absolutely gorgeous. But it's distinctly spicy, I will say that. Now, you know my opinion on wine, but I have tried mulled wine, I've tried a mouthful of it. It tasted like dog shit, but I do remember the taste of it and it was quite spicy and some of the spices you get in mulled wine are in here. Oh, it smells absolutely gorgeous. There's definitely ginger in there, I am getting that. Or what appears to be ginger. And it is like a liquid Christmas cake. Let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Oh, that is really good. That is really good. Spicy, that's the first thing that hits you. And, wow, that finish is really good. When I say Christmas cake, that really is what it's like. 
So you've got raisins, sultanas, orange zest. That's what I'm getting. The orange zest is quite noticeable in this, and it's it's quite it's quite up there. But the finish on it is a mixture of toffee and chocolate, and then that gives way to earthy black pepper bitterness on the finish. You really wouldn't think that that was 4.3%. It's really full bodied as well. And that's, I'm assuming, coming from that malted wheat. And there's obviously a reason they've put it in there and it really does work. Oh, that is good. That is so good. It's like, it's the only way I can describe it. It's like a, it's like a Christmas cake with the alcohol in it as well, which is giving it a, you know, the alcohol gives it a slight bitterness to it. And that's what I'm getting on there. But it just, it just works. Everything in this works and it works really well. And you can tell that that is a winter drink with them spices. Now, I can only imagine what this would taste like on cask. That would be absolutely amazing. But it's really good out the bottle. I have to say, really is what I would consider a winter ale. And again, I have to stress, you would not believe that that was 4.3%. It does taste stronger. It's very full bodied. It is full of flavor. It is bursting with flavor. No real No real nasties in that too, and I'm sure they put some spices in there, but they just work. They've got the balance just right. That lovely orange zest as well, that runs all the way through it, and it just gives it a nice, subtle bitterness. But there's a lot of sweet on there coming from the malt. And I have to say, that is a really good one. I do like winter ales, and starting off on this one, this is fantastic, I love it. What's the verdict on the Orkney Brewery's Clutey Dumpling? Really good. Now, these are a great brewery. I, everyone I've tried from them has been absolutely great. And this does not let the side down at all. I really like it. It's a typical winter beer. It's got lots of spice in there. It's got lots of fruit, light and dark fruit. And then you've got that lovely orange zest running through it. But there is a sweetness to it as well coming from the malt. You know, you, get, you do get the chocolate on the finish, but then you get the earth and the l little hint of black pepper bitterness, which just lingers and lingers. And altogether, that is a fantastic beer. I am gonna give it a nine out of 10. I really do like that. And if you're looking for a decent winter beer that's not too strong, you gotta remember a lot of these winter beers are quite strong. I know the Sam Smith's Winter Welcome is quite strong. I think that's 6%. The Shepherd Neem, I think, is 7.3 or 7.5. Two really good beers, but masses of alcohol in them. If you're looking for something a little bit less heavy duty, I really do recommend this. This has got all the flavor, but without the high ABV. Really good stuff. For me, that's a nine out of 10. Definitely recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>